Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we are covering climate and weather and with specific attention to urban climate. All right, and of course in our curriculum we're going to look for reasons for difference between rural and urban climates. We're going to look at the urban heat island and we're going to look at causes, effects, strategies to reduce it. We're also going to look at the causes of pollution domes, what is it, effects of pollution domes, and strategies to reduce. I will be combining some of these sections as we go through our presentation, not only to save you data, but the information is similar. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, reasons for difference between rural and urban climates. Already, just from this picture, I will go into more detail as we go through this presentation. You can see there's a difference in the structures of the rural area and the urban area. More open spaces, less buildings, more water surfaces. Yeah, concrete jungle, tarred roads, building upon building with very few green spaces that is found here. So automatically you're going to pick up uh, from this alone without even discussion, uh, which we will go through later, that the urban area is warmer than the rural area. Okay, because all these structures, etc., and all the activities. Okay, now we come across a concept known as urban heat islands. All right, and how do we define it? An urban area of higher temperature surrounded by a rural area of lower temperature. It's like an island, a temperature island. You understand an island, normal island, is a piece of land surrounded by water. Here we have a hot area surrounded by a colder area. The hot area being the urban area and the cooler area being the, or the warm area being the urban area and the cooler area being the rural uh, area itself. So let's look at reasons and factors influencing, reasons for the difference between the both. And same time, we could also, because it's the same factors that cause a heat island, okay? So we look at reasons for the difference in rural and urban areas in terms of temperature. And secondly, we're going to look at the differences or the cause of the heat island, okay? So let's get going. Now we look at the heat island effect. We find dark roads, parking lots, you understand these dark tarred roads retain heat, dark rooftops retain heat, lack of trees means less shade, less evaporation or transpiration rather to cool the air. Heat is trapped by the buildings, okay? Uh, waste heat from factories, okay, buildings which and vehicles which add to the heat island, we just put it waste heat, but you just write heat, all right? That's given off impermeable surfaces, reduce surface moisture, because it flows away, all right? And all these factors with many others in this big city make it different, you understand? And where the density is higher, you can look at it down here, Okay, I know this is in Fahrenheit, I do apologize, but I like this diagram. It actually explains it. And it's an American way of doing things, Fahrenheit. We normally use degrees Celsius. But even if I forget about that, you'll notice higher temperatures, a little high there because it's a built up area, low here because there's greenery. You understand? It picks up a bit because there's a residential area here and it goes down because it's the rural farmland here. Can you see it? So wherever there's buildings, etc., it tends to pick up. Where there's activity, like industrial activity, it tends to pick up. 
right in terms of the temperature itself and where there's a lot of greenery because of transpiration and the cooling effect of vegetation it actually reduces the temperature okay so let's go through the factors so reasons and causes reasons for difference in rural urban temperatures okay and causes of the heat island i've put them together okay so human activities in urban areas there's far more human activities it's businesses it's, and the people etc contribute greatly to the difference between rural and urban climate all right, there's less people in the rural areas, generally speaking, all right, because there's more farming, etc. They alter the local climate through industries. There's industries in the urban area, and if there's industries, they're giving off heat, smoke, pollutants which trap the heat, making the urban area warmer. Higher temperatures due to more artificial surfaces found in the urban area buildings factories concrete i love concrete eh? again concrete steel tar they absorb more heat than open surfaces okay which actually release heat you know on when the temperature is 40 degrees celsius you go stand on that tarred road don't try it at all eh? because you're gonna burn all right uh, but then when the when the sun goes down the heat in the tar still remains for some time but if you could put your leg on an open land surface you understand you find it cools quickly so it retains the heat more activities more vehicles fuel combustion businesses air conditioners operating various things make the urban area warmer all right warmer there's more cloud cover, more fog, more precipitation. Okay, due to more hydroscopic, hydroscopic nuclei and moisture from the rural, comes from the rural areas. You may say there's more moisture in, in the rural areas. Why is the city getting more rainfall? You understand? Uh, now, what actually happens here, learners, is this. I'm just going to throw a little thing here. The city is hotter, so it has a lower pressure. The rural area is cooler, so it has a relatively, compared to that, a higher pressure and a higher pressure, okay, on the rural areas. So what happens now? Air moves from high pressure to low pressure from the rural areas to the urban area, and it brings in the moisture, okay? brings in the moisture so actually the urban area gets more rainfall because of this moisture moving as this moisture moves in it heats up air rises you understand it condenses because the urban area has got more dust so more condensation nuclei more pollutants more condensation nuclei more droplets of water more clouds you understand and therefore more rainfall but also the clouds itself actually uh reflect heat back to the surface okay slower wind speeds due to friction from tall buildings you must know the tall buildings in the area and there comes the wind it slows it down and you know slower wind speeds allow for more heat you know when you sit in front of the fan okay some of you are gifted you sit in front of the air conditioners all right we have to sit in front of the fans and you notice the stronger the wind you feel cooler you put the fan off on a hot day you feel hot all right so less movement of heat or slows down the speed of heat low relative humidity due to less vegetation okay low relative humidity all right so also allowing the heat to come in and the urban drainage system you know you have these big storm water pipes which take the humidity away all right so it's easier to heat up all right you know you watch those ninja turtles and you notice those big storm water pipes it has to go through otherwise the city will flood so uh, water has to flow away very quickly if there's a flood otherwise you flood the city multiple reflections which tap the heat 
you've got a big building and then you've got a big building here and what happens when this building gives off the heat it gets sent down here it's reflected in between it then reflects it back here and here and the heat gets trapped in between there retaining the heat all right uh, as i said removal of water through stormwater pipes i'm repeating myself okay we've done that there and of course things like the large amount of people also uh, make it hot in various ways okay giving off heat and other things but we won't go into detail on that okay so we've got our reasons for difference in urban and rural climate and also the causes of the urban heat island all right effects of the urban heat island all right it's heat related illnesses learners heat related illnesses or due to heat and fatalities you can even die due to incidents of thermal discomfort because of the heat on human cardiovascular and respiratory systems sometimes the heat doesn't allow people to breathe properly all right you can get heat strokes heat exhaustion you feel faint because of all the heat all right increased pollution results in respiratory problems because with that comes the factories etc respiratory problems and if it's fog together with the pollution will create smog okay smog is a mixture of fog and the pollutants which reduces visibility all right it makes it less visible accidents difficulty in driving etc right also high temperatures may produce physiological disturbances on plants they're not used to these high temperatures as the urban heat island grows and physiologically they will experience things they could dry off and whatever you understand so heat islands are not a good thing okay it causes a lot of problems okay then we have the pollution dome okay now what is a pollution dome remember there's a lot of pollution given off in the city all right so it's a layer of pollution air pollution above an area above an urban area it just hangs over the urban area can you see down here too? It's hanging over the urban area. All right. That's your pollution dome. Okay. It's here also the night and the day. Causes of pollution dome. Contributing factors, human activities, industries, vehicles, all giving off pollution. All right. And then the stable air over the urban area traps the pollution. So you've got this pollution coming up here and then you've got the subsiding air down here coming down you understand from the top warm air is rising and of course obviously from top air is subsiding and this pollution dome gets trapped in here and it hangs over the city all right now the pollution dome is higher during the day and lower and more concentrated during the night why because during the day it's warmer there's more rising air and less subsiding air but during the day due to terrestrial radiation various factors as sun has set you understand it's colder during the night so what's happening when it's colder there's more subsiding air all right and more subsiding air coming through and what does it do it pushes the pollution dome closer vertically to the urban area you can see it's higher here it's more anvil shaped it's more spread out because it's hot the air hot and therefore the air has got more energy it's spreading out it's wider as i said anvil shaped etc and during the night because it's cooler more subsiding air it's right near the urban area vertically okay so that's what will happen here because during the night there's more subsiding air during the night so you may you can identify them by looking at the two of them which is day which is night all right effects of pollution though it contributes to the formation of heat islands okay it does 
because it traps heat. Remember, the heat is getting trapped. Yeah, it's more concentrated because it's closer, although there's less activities in the night. You understand? But because it's closer, it's more concentrated. It traps the heat. Respiratory illness, all the pollution being trapped. More pollutants, more condensation, more precipitation. I must add the O there and the N down here. Whoa, terrible. Okay, so the O and the N. All right. And lead poisoning from trapped petrol fumes. All right, I think now we're going unleaded. So maybe that's not as relevant. But lead poisoning from petrol fumes is, was one of the main factors. Okay, so it still can be relevant wherever it's being used. All right. Now, strategies to reduce the urban heat island effect and the pollution dome. See, I'm linking them, All right? Of course, energy saving strategies for with solar panels, which will reduce the heat island effect. All right, the heat island. All right, because it'll make it cooler, your solar panels. Plus, if we're using solar panels, we are creating less pollution by burning coal. Okay, so it cools the area, all right? We're not burning all these things. Green development, like rooftop gardens, like this one here, can you see? There's the building here, all right? And there's a rooftop vegetation down here. Can you see it? All right, transpiration, it's cooling, the vegetation is cooling the area, absorbing, the carbon dioxide, etc., which is good to reduce the heat island effect. Appropriate building design, cool reflective roofs, cool colors, a painting of buildings white. You understand? So it doesn't absorb as much heat, it reflects it. Using energy efficient appliances and equipment that uses less, even your globes in your house is energy efficient, less energy is used. And then it's factors relating to global warming can also be used. It's sustainable strategies, encouraging uh, bicycles, all right, which will then reduce the amount of cars being used in the urban area. Public transport. You understand, uh, in the sense that public transport will uh, allow for less vehicles on the road, less carbon dioxide or monoxide being released. Please, when you answer, you see sustainable strategies explain. You don't just say use public transport because in geography, it's two marks of eight. You must say use public transport, therefore it will result in less vehicles on the road, less carbon emissions. Can you see the full answers itself? You must answer in that way. Okay, very, very important. I showed you the future slide there. Okay, that's a future attraction. Okay, but this is the strategies that you can implement. And of course, the factors relating to warm global warming can be included, but you must relate it to heat island effect and how it reduces the temperatures. Okay, learners, that's your urban climates. I hope it has assisted you. All the best. Goodbye.